All right there, class, we're here today. Uh, we're going to take a look at Capstone, uh, the software, and specifically we are going to use Capstone to learn how to use uh, this for data analysis. Specifically, we're going to focus on how to use the coordinates tool. We'll use the statistics tool, the slope tool, how to fit in uh, a linear fit, and then actually how to find area under a graph. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over to my uh, data and we are going to take a look at how to use our coordinates tool. All right, so here I am in my um, Capstone software and I have some kind of data here. Uh, this is my toolbar up here. And what I wanted to show you here how to use is the coordinates tool. The coordinates tool is this one right here. So I'm going to click on it. And what this does is it brings it up right in here. And what, what's going to happen is I bring this over closer is it's going to snap in on each of the data points that we have on our data. So let's say, for example, I wanted to know what the, uh, the object was doing at, I don't know, six seconds. Okay, so this right here um, is going to tell me at six seconds we were at, uh, looks like 0.5943 meters. Uh, so this is a way that we can kind of zoom in on a very specific spot uh, on our data. If I right click on this, I can actually make this into what's called a delta tool. And now the delta tool, what this does, once again, it allows me to snap in on specific points. Let's say I want to know the time difference between right here and right here. Uh, this gives me the delta, uh, in other words, the change between these two. So that was a total total time interval of 1.4 seconds. And uh, over here, I can drag this out of the way. Looks like in that time interval of 1.4 seconds, it looked like it's moved this much uh, displacement. Okay, so that's the basic idea of the coordinates tool. The coordinates tool, of course, can also be turned into the slope tool. Uh, sorry, not the slope tool, the, uh, the, the delta tool as well. Okay, next up on our list was the statistics tool here. Uh, what we're going to take a look at here is uh, how to use the statistics tool. So let's go back over to my data. And let's say, for example, uh, let, me get rid of, let me get rid of my old data here. Uh, I can do that by clicking on that and saying I just want to get rid of it. Um, but let's say I wanted to find the average of this, this up here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the thing that looks like a sigma, and this is the statistics tool. Uh, so I can click on the drop-down menu, and right now it's selected to show me the average. Of course, there are other things that, that we can do with here. I can show maximum and minimum, uh, and so forth and so on. But to turn this on, what I need to do is click on that. And right now, since the entire run is selected, uh, it's showing me the average position for the entire time interval. But maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I want to find the average of the values here from about, I don't know, about 8 seconds to 12 seconds. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to highlight. So I get my highlighter, and I bring it over here, and I highlight the specific section that I'm concerned about. And again, in this case, it uh, looks like the average there is about 1.5827. Um, so again, if you want the entire data run, you're going to need to, you can just click the statistics and turn it on. But if you want a specific region, like let's say in here, you need to highlight the specific region that you're interested in. And that will average what is in that region that we've selected. Okay, next up, we are looking at using the slope tool. Let's go over and look at that. So the slope tool... Uh, to, to use the slope tool, that's this one right here. And basically what this slope tool allows me to do is it allows me to find a slope at a very specific point in time. So some, I might call this an instantaneous slope. It's at some instant in time, what is the slope? So as I click it over here and drag it, you'll notice again, it does in fact snap to certain spots. And you'll notice that I can, you know, allow it to be there. And it, of course, snaps in place and tells me that the slope is equal to 
five zero meters. Now you'll notice this is um, this is the you know this is pretty much a straight line, so the slope is going to be pretty much constant for there. Uh, let me go to a different line graph where we had um, curves. Let's go. To, I think it was run number four here, um, and this is where the slope tool actually really kind of makes more sense to be using is because notice here how this is a curved line. The slope tool allows us to find the slope, again, at a variety of, of points. So if I want to look at, let's say, five and a half seconds, five and a half seconds is right here, and I can find that my, my slope is this value here. Um, I can also, let's say I want to go to six seconds. I bring it up here to six seconds, and again, there's my value. So this is a changing slope, and the slope tool does a really nice job of finding slopes that are changing. So when we have a non-straight line, non-linear, this is the best, probably the one of the best things you can use here. Now, sometimes it's convenient to find slope in a different way, and that is by using a linear fit. So we're going to go over and show you that. So, of course, one of the first things I want is a straight line. So I'm going to actually go back to run number one, which is where I had uh, a straight line. And again, for the most part, this is a constant slope. Uh, and again, if you bring your slope tool over there, you'll see that it's, it's a relatively constant thing. But if I want to get kind of an average slope over the entire thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, uh, the fit. Okay, this allows me to fit curves. The one that we'll specifically be using here is the linear fit. Now, when I click on it and check it, what it's trying to do is fit a line to the entire data set. So just like when we used our statistics tool earlier, we also need to highlight the section that we're concerned about. In this case, the section I'm concerned about is this section that is linear. And you'll notice that when it does this, it'll tell me, first of all, it shows me that the line is kind of lined up with that. Uh, as you notice here, it lines up really nicely. Um, again, and then uh, here we have uh, the slope is given to us and it gives us some uh, plus or minuses. This is how much it, it kind of like an error amount there. Uh, and then, of course, there is the uh, B value, which, of course, would be our uh, Y intercept. OK, and the last thing that we're going to do is finding area under a curve. Um, for those of you that have had calculus, finding area, you understand, is doing the same thing as uh, doing an integral. Um, we're not worried about doing integrals or anything here in this class, but uh, we can find the area um, under curves anyway. So the way to do that is it's this line, uh, tool right here. This will display an area under the selected area, uh, under the selected data. Once again, if, if I um, click on this and I have nothing selected, it's going to try to fit an area under everything that I have here. But again, maybe I'm not concerned about this, this time out here. So once again, if I highlight a certain time interval, then it's only finding the area in this time interval. Um, so again, that's helpful if, if I want to find, uh, you know, to drill this down into specific parts of the motion that we're, that we're recording. So hopefully in this, this video, you have learned how to use your coordinates tool. You've also learned how to use the statistics tool to find things like average. We've used the slope tool to find the slope of a line, uh, specifically, probably more likely a curved line that uh, changes its slope. We've also learned how when we have a straight line that we can use a linear fit to find the slope of that line. And we've also learned how to find the area under a curve.